Ukraine doesn't need the F-22 and F-35 to take on Russia. Give them the new A-10 Warthog, and the question changes from can Ukraine repel Russia's invasion to could Ukraine defeat Russia and actually win this war? The A-10 is the U.S. military's go-to tank buster aircraft. And with so many Russian tanks in Ukraine, could the U.S. be sending the A-10s to Ukraine sometime soon, despite NATO having already made it clear that they won't be sending attack aircraft to Ukraine? So why did the A-10 question rise at all? Simply put, it's all gotten too far. Russia is showing no sign of slowing down the invasion, and the West is finding it increasingly difficult to just watch from the sidelines. Yes, they've been sending in boatloads of military equipment, but those do not historically win wars. The decisive factors in wars have always been the aircraft involved, particularly fighters. The Ukrainian government knows this and has requested aircraft from NATO, to which they have said no, as it could get Russia all worked up. The A-10 in particular is something Russia must already know all too well, and know that it's something to worry about if past data is anything to go by, which it is. Dating back to the first Gulf War, known as Operation Desert Storm, the A-10, thanks to the widest variety of ordnance, wreaked havoc of ceaseless missile and gunfire downpour on the frontline T-55, T-62, and T-72 tanks designed by the Soviets, now mainly Russia. And thanks to the aircraft's 1,200-pound titanium armor, it had massive survivability that allowed it to absorb damage and continue flying, as was the case when then-Captain Paul Johnson's A-10 took a direct missile hit to the right wing. So yes, the A-10 and Russia have met before, and Russia wouldn't particularly be looking forward to another encounter, especially since the aircraft has since been upgraded to be far more lethal and survivable than it was during Operation Desert Storm. Being the only operational U.S. aircraft built from the ground up for close air support, or CAS, and proving its effectiveness in delivering this CAS while saving hundreds of lives in the process, the A-10 has garnered fans from both the military and civilian spaces. So much so that Congress has constantly protected the A-10 from retirement by packing it full of upgrades. So many upgrades, in fact, that they had to be installed in batches, known as suites. So, what are these suites of upgrades, and what gifts did they come bearing? The radical change of the A-10 Warthog began from the Suite 8 upgrades. This came with V-12 lightweight airborne recovery systems installed into the aircraft center interface control unit. And following this installation was significantly more effective communication between A-10 pilots and personnel on the ground such as para-rescuemen, and pilots whose planes had been shot down. Suite 8 also came with longer-ranging standoff weapons, such as the AGR-20 Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System rockets that load four times faster than its predecessor. This canceled out the dangerous need for A-10s to fly in the face of danger before taking a shot, and it also made up for the A-10's lack of the super maneuverability of supersonic combat jets like the F-35. The effect of this upgrade rippled all the way to tactics employed with the A-10 by leveraging the combination of the Warthog's night vision goggles and new weapons at its disposal. And so after Suite 8, the A-10 Warthog was able to effectively engage maritime targets and dominate battlefields at night and at medium or low altitudes. Suite 9 took off with the integration of a situational awareness pad into the operational flight program of the Warthog. This enabled Joint Terminal Attack Controllers, or JTACs, to digitally report their positions, a significant leap from requiring pilots to search for them on the ground, where they could easily be camouflaged by dust. And solving more camouflaging and targeting issues, the A-10 could now validate targets to prevent accidentally taking aim at friendlies with its shiny new Sweet 8 weapons in the heat of the moment, which is really every moment on a battlefield. With this assurance that friendlies are out of the line of fire, the A-10 was enabled to, at the push of a single button, simultaneously engage up to six targets at a time with a cocktail of different precision-guided munitions from the 500-pound class GBU-38 explosives through to the 2,000-pound class GBU-31 joint direct attack munitions, all set for their respective successful explosive journeys thanks to pinpoint accuracy capabilities. 
The precision of these explosives were then enhanced by the gift of more accurate responses to pilot head movements from another Suite 9 feature, the hybrid optical-based internal tracker high-tech helmets. With the advent of smart bomb technology taking off, the Suite 10 upgrades of the A-10 came with a full integration of laser-guided AGR-20 advanced precision kill weapon systems, GBU-31 JDAM guidance kits for converting unguided bombs into all-weather smart bombs, and small diameter bombs with advanced multi-target engagement capability that would see the Warthog able to take out 18 different targets at once, and with much higher accuracy too, in thanks to not only the JDAM guidance and smartness of the new bombs, but also due to the A-10's new synthetic aperture radar pod that would have the aircraft aiming like a sniper as it cuts through the air with brand new wings provided by Boeing. Boeing was awarded a contract to deliver 173 sets of new wings for the A-10. The contract was to the tune of $1.1 billion, and the resulting wings would last for up to 10,000 flight hours before requiring a depot inspection, which is a lot of flight hours. Another contract, known as the A-10 Thunderbolt Advanced Wing Continuation Kit, was launched to provide an additional 112 sets of wings. Suite 10 then rounded up its showers on the A-10 with a data link that allows threat information to be shared efficiently between A-10 pilots, resulting in increased spatial, battlefield, and situational awareness, all important ingredients for survivability, and so addresses the survivability fears of the Air Force leaders regarding the Warthog, at least significantly. Suite 11 was designed to upgrade the A-10 to as close to fifth-generation aircraft as possible. Now, of course, nothing could be done economically to reshape the aircraft to look more sleek and stealthy as the F-35, but in terms of the avionics, there were changes. Suite 11 focused on the most significant modernization of the A-10's cockpit since 2005, a digital primary display in the form of the new 11.6-inch 1920x1080 pixel multifunction color display high-resolution display system, HDRS. The HDRS would pamper pilots with cinema-level quality of targeting pod footage and an advanced map engine to enhance target correlation with the battlefield. Then following the HDRS was the introduction of jam-resistant GPS, a three-dimensional surround sound system, the ARC-210 radio, and agile development methodologies to bring all these upgrades to life while allowing for rapid enhancement updates to take place should a suite 12 of upgrades ever need to happen. But with the A-10 edging on fifth generation, the aircraft could already be as lethal as any attack aircraft from its generation could be. And proof of that can be seen in the fact that people are calling that the aircraft be sent to Ukraine to combat modern Russia as a form of a take-on-someone-your-own-size statement to the Russian Air Force, who, like the ground forces with tanks, have been quite busy in Ukraine. So sending the A-10 to Ukraine at this time would be a good idea. Well, Russia has the most tanks of any country in the world, and the A-10 was designed primarily as a tank buster. Its primary weapon, the 30mm hydraulically driven 7-barrel Gatling-style GAU-8 Avenger autocannon that uses both high-explosive incendiary and armor-piecing incendiary rounds containing depleted uranium, is more powerful than the cannon on the F-35. So the A-10 can fire 3,900 rounds a minute from the Avenger, while also using its externally mounted missiles and smart munitions. With that said, the A-10 may be considered too lethal a gift by the Russian military and choose to aim at NATO directly for getting heavily involved, as threatened by Russian President Vladimir Putin before the invasion began. And the last thing anyone anywhere may want is an all-out war between Russia and NATO. As combined, they have enough nuclear weapons to destroy the world as we know it. And so, when asked if any A-10s would be going to Ukraine, the U.S. Air Force Secretary, Frank Kendall, and the U.S. Air Force Chief of Staff, General C.Q. Brown, both said they are not aware of any plans to do so. The A-10 would likely not be going to Ukraine and has still never been flown by any other country but the U.S., a testament to just how special it is to Americans. The A-10 Warthog, an attack aircraft that has been more of an overhead protector than anything else, 
standing the test of time for 50 years and continuing to take to the skies to save one life after another while only asking one thing in return, that you subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So what do you think of the A-10? Should it be sent to Ukraine or stay put? Share your opinions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.